we'll come back to Diamond's concepts. Um, we're looking at the final question in January 2023, 6E Mathematics exam, paper two. Uh, so this is always entitled Vector and Major Series. All right, so let us uh, see what the questions are. So part A, it says uh, three major series, Q, R, and S are as follows. So we're looking at them. Um, we're seeing where Q is the matrix 2, negative 1, 4, 3. R is the matrix 1, 6, negative 5, 4. And S is the matrix 2, 7, 4, negative 1, negative 8, 9. So we're actually looking at those. All right. Um, the question says, uh, explain, right? It says, explain why the matrix product QS is not possible, right? So they want us to explain why the matrix product QS is not um, possible. So Q, Q. So let's write on the order of the matrix that we have, right? So Q, the order of the matrix Q is a two by two. Two matrix, which means it has two rows and two columns, right? So it is a two by two matrix, and it's going to be multiplied by the matrix S. And this is a three by two matrix, which means it has one, two, three rows and one, two columns, right? So that's a three by two matrix. Now let's observe what they want. They're saying, why is it not possible? Right. So the basic idea is for them to be compatible. If you should write down the order of the matrix in the way in which they will be multiplied, for example, the Q matrix before the S matrix, as we're instructed here, we are saying that the two inner numbers should be the same if they are possible. The fact that one one is a two and the other one is a three, that is saying that no, they they are not compatible that cannot be multiplied what what's the real reason it is simply because so we're going to state why so we're going to tell why this won't work because the the number of i'd say columns in the first matrix because the number of columns in the first matrix is not equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. I think I left off the red matrix here, right here. So basically, we're saying the reason why this matrix product is not possible is because the number of columns in the first matrix is not equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. Because of that, they are not possible to be multiplied, cannot be multiplied. Let us look on the next one. State the order. So we're looking at number two here. It says, state the order of the matrix product SR, right? So we want to look at SR, which means that we have to write the matrix S first, then the matrix R after that, right? State, this is what they want us to do, you know, state the order. We're not going to work them out. Just state the order. Now, let's write down again in terms of the order for the two matrix. So we have a three by two matrix that will be multiplied by a two by two matrix. Again, these two inner numbers will tell you if it is possible. But the two N numbers will tell you the result, the order of the result. So the order of the product will be a 3 by 2. The two N numbers will tell what the order of the result will be like. So they're not required of us to work it out. We're just required to state it. It's a three by two matrix, the order of SR. Last one now, under that, it says calculate the matrix product QR. So let us write down QR, column, right? So row by column. So let me identify the rows and the columns. So I'm going to put the rows from the first in green. So here are, here are my rows. And I'm going to put the column 
from the next matrix may be in a kind of pinkish. So this is column. So let's let's mark them. So we're talking about row one, row two, and then we have column one, column two. What it is that we're really going to be doing is this. Row one will multiply by column one. Row one again will multiply by column two. Then row two with column one. Then row two with column two. And this will give us our result. That's what we're going to be embarking on now. So we want to follow that. Row one with column one. So we're talking about two times one plus negative one times negative five. Row one with column one, finish. Row one with column two. So I'm going to execute this one now. Row one with column two. So we're talking about two times six plus negative one times four, right? So there it is. So row one with column two. Now we're going to go to row two, column one. Row two, column one. From row two, we're going to have four times one plus three times negative five. Then lastly, row two, column two, it's going to be four times six plus three times four. And then we want to put that together and we're done. Let us just go through. That's All right, so let us put this together. So we're talking about... Um, uh, 2 plus 5, I'm going to put 2 plus 5 here. And then what we have here is a 2, two 6 is 12, you're minusing 4. And then underneath that, we have a 4 minus 15. And then we have a 24 plus 12. Final response, let's put it down. We have 7, 8, negative 11, and 36. All right, let us continue. All right, so for this other question now that we have, it says, given that A, right? So given that A um, is 4 negative 1, negative 7x, all right? So we want to determine the value of x when the determinant is equal to 5. When you see those two strokes um, over the matrix, it is the determinant of the matrix, right? So the determinant of A is five. The determinant of the matrix can be found by taking the product of the leading diagonal. Yeah. And what we want to do with that is to subtract from that the product of the other diagonal. Right. So we want to set up that, let it equal to five, and then we solve. Let's go. So we're talking about four times x subtract negative 7 times negative 1, and this must be equal to 5. So 4 times x is 4x. We have, what we have in here is minus a 7, because uh, the negative and the negative will give us 7, but we do have a negative, or a minus sign out there, and this should equal to 5. Solving ordinarily, so 4x is now equal to the 5 plus the 7, we could come right here. So 4x is equal to 12, dividing both sides by 4. x is equal to 3. All right. So we have that down. x is equal to 3. All right. Let us continue working. All right. So here it is. We're at the vector section, right? So it says in the diagram below, OPQ is a triangle. So we're looking at OPQ as a triangle. A, R, B, and A, O, Q are straight lines. So we're looking at those. B is the midpoint of B is the midpoint of P, Q. Very important. B right here. This is the middle of P, Q. All right. So it's the midpoint of P, Q. All right. So have that done. It says R. R is the midpoint of AB. So R right here is the midpoint of AB out here, right? So R is the midpoint of AB. All right, so we want to make a note of that. 
other information, OR to, so the ratio of OR to RP is one to three. What it means is that this line O, O, P was actually into four parts, four equal parts, right? So O, P is actually into four in parts such that from O to R is one out of the entire thing. That means R, P is actually three. We are seeing that. Now they went ahead and they said O, P is four. Now, if OP, that means from O, let me mark it, from O to P is 4A, right? Now, normally when I get this, I want to put on some labels on my diagram right now. So that simply means that in that direction, from O to P, right? In that direction, from O to P, I am saying that this is A from O to R is A, and then from R to P is 3A. Because we were told that it's in a ratio of 1 to 3. O, R, for example, we were told this right here. So understanding that, I can now label these spots, right? And O, Q is 8B. O, Q is 8B. I'm putting this on from O, to Q, put on the arrow, is 8B. I like putting on these early. I want to put on these early, then we're able to navigate, you know, quite simply. All right, let's go. All right. First question it says here that what we want to do, we want to find PQ. And watch the arrow, PQ. PQ. Now, if I want to go from P to Q, that means I want to add this way, yeah? But looking at the diagram that I have, I have to find that, that road, and normally the form of a triangle. So I'm just going to highlight it quickly and then remove it. So I want to take this road, P to O, and then move from O to Q. I'm going to take that road, right? But let's look at it one more time. P to O, and then move from O to Q. Let's write that down. All right, let's work that. We could work that somewhere here. Maybe we could work it right here. So we're looking for P, Q, but we're going to be leaving from P, moving from P to O, and then we're leaving O, and we add into Q. Now, P to O is going against this here. We're going against the arrow, so it's going to be is going to be the opposite direction, so it's negative 4a. And then I'm going to go in the regular direction from O to Q. And that is 8b. All right? So that is simply what we have for PQ. It's minus 4a plus 8b. Let's look at PR. PR. So if you want to go PR, let's mark it. PR. Oh, PR is right here. Now that's already been labeled, right? So PR, as we could see, that it was, it was actually three-fourth because it's three-fourth of the entire journey. You could see that. It's three-fourth of the 4A, right? But remember now, it's going in the other direction. So at the end of the day, it's going to be the negative of that, right? So it's actually, so let's go again. PR, right? So it's going to be 3A, but it's negative 3A, right? But you could see that from the diagram here already. This is just, you know, to show those who want to see a working out. But definitely having that, you could just write it. You come in the opposite direction, so it's going to be the negative 3A. Right? Right there. All right. RB. Let's mark RB. If I want to go from R to B, this is RB. If I want to go from R to B, the road that I'm going to take is the simplest one. I'll go from, there are more than one, but I'll take the simplest one. I'll go from R to P and then P to B. Let's look at it again. I'll move from R to P. 
extend from P to B. And we're done. So let's write that down. Probably could put that beside it right there. RB. So I'm doing RB. I'm going to be moving from R to P plus from P to B. Now, RP, RP, from R to P, that is positive 3A. And then PB, B is the midpoint, right? B is the midpoint. But remember that we find PQ, B is the midpoint of that. So basically, basically PB, PB, we could just take apart what PB is. From P to B, it's just going to be the half of PQ, of which this is half of negative 4A plus 8B. And then we could see that it's going to be negative 2A plus 4B. Because PB is a half of the journey since B is the midpoint. So what we're adding here, we're adding half of that, negative 2a plus 4b. Let's simplify this. 3a minus 2a is going to leave us with a, and then we have a 4b. So rb is simply a plus 4b. All right, and that is it. Thank you for watching Daily Maths Concept one more time. I'm looking for more things that are coming. And if you have not yet um, subscribed to the channel, please do so. All right. See you next time. Bye-bye.